a bit provocative, sure, I admit, but I mean, this is the internet, you know how the game goes. I am not here to make an argument that the router is not necessary or obsolete by any stretch of the imagination, but I am here to make an argument that I think that there is a more interesting and engaging way to add an edge profile to your piece that elevates the object beyond mass production. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. So here's the thing about the router. It does any number of things really well and really quickly. It is almost impossible to be a contemporary furniture maker without the use of this machine, nor would I ever try to do so. But it does have its limitations like all other machines. Namely, its goal is uniformity. It aims to make the same cut every time, which is great in a lot of circumstances. When you're doing joinery, for example, you want the same cut every time. However, when you apply that same logic to an edge profile, and what I mean by that is the corner of a piece, it tends to look a little bit lifeless, a little bit mass produced. And that's not a bad thing per se, but it doesn't speak to the amount of effort and work and care and love that you put into the object you're making. It just kind of speaks to the path of least resistance. Now, trade that for a tool like the Spokeshave, which has the ability to imbue those subtle differences that your hand imparts on an object, and it can really start to come to life. Now, I'm not going to say that the Spokeshave is an absolute replacement for the router. It has its limitations. For example, your hand is not consistent. Your hand is not as accurate as a machine. And so, if you're trying to get a perfectly consistent edge profile, it's gonna be difficult to do that with this. Not impossible, I do it regularly, but more difficult than with a router. This, however, does have the ability to change, and I think that's the advantage that it has. So in order to visually show you what I'm talking about, we're gonna do a quick head-to-head -head competition on a couple of pieces of scrap. I've got two pieces of pine here. They have been milled to the same dimensions. We are going to impart a curve on them. We're gonna put a chamfer on with the router. We're gonna put a dynamic chamfer on with the spoke shave. We're gonna see which one is more interesting. So we've got our two pieces. We've got our routed piece and we've got our hand-shaped piece. Now, this may be difficult to tell, but can you see how even this profile is along the length of this piece? Even on the ends. And there's not anything necessarily wrong with that. It's perfectly adequate, but it feels static. It feels produced. It feels... There is something lacking humanity in this. It doesn't make it wrong. I'm trying not to make it a value statement because it has its place and to design interesting objects only with the use of machine is possible and difficult. However, when you have a profile that grows over time and over length, that accentuates a curve, interesting things can happen. So let's take this edge profile as an example. You have a piece that's wider at the bottom than it is at the top, kind of like a tree, 
And sometimes you need to hit these dimensions, so you need to accentuate that curve without actually altering either of the dimensions. So what you do is you take that bottom chamfer, you make it tiny, and over the length of the piece, that chamfer grows until this piece feels a lot smaller. And that curve, even though fairly subtle, feels much more accentuated because that edge profile, that chamfer, is moving with the curve itself. The curvature, the edge profile, the, the texture of the piece, it all feels like it's more synergistic than if it's just this very static line on a very dynamic profile. All right, all right, I hear you. This is all good and well in theory, but where do you actually apply a principle like this in an object? I'm so glad you asked, because that's exactly where I'm at in the table build. So, here's the situation. I've got the joinery all done for the table and everything is looking nice. I'm really quite happy with where it's at, but it's a little bit stale, it's a little bit static. The forms that I have on these legs, while nice and subtle, aren't interesting. They're a little bit flat. Now, the conundrum that I'm in is that these forms can't be super accentuated. They can't be loud visually because the goal of the base is to be as subtle and as quiet as possible to accentuate the slab of the top. So I need to make these just a little bit more interesting, a little bit more engaging, but in a subtle and quiet way. And how do you do that? But with the details, but with the small things that draw you in, but you don't notice until you're right up on it. Edge profiles. So what I'm about to do is I'm going to take these legs and I'm going to accentuate this line with just a slight bevel on the interior. And then I'm going to accentuate the curve with the chamfer that we just did on the pine pieces. So let's play around and see how it turns out. of a workshop well used. Now, 
Let's have a quick conversation about this. So right off the jump, you get these details on the foot that lead us up into the leg. And now you get that first bit of dynamic profile that shifts as you grow up, getting a little bit thinner and a little bit thinner. And I think that in and of itself just gives a little bit of movement to this object. Just the tiniest little bit of dynamism, a little bit of life to it. Not to mention this profile on the interior here. So if you're looking at this, this starts off as square. And then as it goes, it rotates up and out, right? It does one of these a little bit. It just kind of does this, just the tiniest little bit. And not that that makes a huge difference, but it makes just enough of a difference to make it feel like it's not static, to make it feel like there's a bit of rotation. There's something going on there. Now look, I'm not out here suggesting that this is gonna make or break a project, right? This is details. What I am suggesting is that your use of a spoke shape simply gives you more opportunity. I'm not saying throw out your router, even though I did kind of say that at the beginning. I'm just saying employ hand tools because they can turn relatively flat objects into three-dimensional objects in a much easier way than you can with machines. And I think there's real value in that. I think there's beauty in that. I think at the least, it's something worth exploring. But for now, I gotta get back to work. I've got a lot of work to do yet on these pieces and on the bench before I can get this glued up and ready for finish so I can get back to having a dining table in my home. So I'm gonna go do that. Friends, I hope this was helpful. I hope it was delightful. I hope it was entertaining and educational. And I hope it inspires you to pick up a sharp hand tool and start playing around a little bit because it's worth it. So, till next week, cheers. Mm -hmm.